Mr. Fuller. He was a, a, a great guy. He had a lot of interesting and insightful quotes, and I'm going to start to talk with one of them. Here he's pointing out that if you actually want to change things, then it's, it's no good fighting, right? That, that doesn't lead to anything. In fact, the way to change things is to create something new that obsoletes the existing order. So I want to explore what the existing order is, because unless we know that, it's going to be difficult to understand how it can change. Here's a few pictures of some uh, buildings, places. Does anyone know, uh, can anyone identify any of these? Feel free to shout out. New York Stock Exchange? Yep, yep, that's right. Say again? Uh, Monte Carlo, indeed, yep. Okay, so uh, the UK land registry is the top right. Um, PayPal's headquarters, top middle. Um, and actually, the bottom right isn't quite the existing order. The bottom right is the uh, now defunct Lehman Brothers Bank. What do they all have in common? Institutions, right? They do things, they, they, they sit at the center of society. They manage people's business. They manage people's assets. They manage people's transactions. But I want to look a bit deeper. I want to understand better what these all have in common. In fact, they operate in a pretty similar way. They all have very um, specific operational building blocks. They begin by accepting instructions, instructions from their clients or from the external world. Really, these are just messages. They're messages that are authenticated in some way. For example, a bank might authenticate a message by virtue of seeing me in person sign an order. Maybe it was a phone call. A casino might authenticate a message by simply having a croupier that sees that I am placing a bet with my chips on the table by moving them onto a particular portion. The other two things are, in fact, computation and record storage. So different institutions manage their um, computation and record storage in different ways. A bank, of course, has uh, lots of records of people's account balances, and the computation is relatively simple. It's addition and subtraction, by and large, with some multiplication for managing interest rates. A casino might have a little bit more multiplication in there, um, but very similar activities. Now, if we break it down in this way, we find we don't quite get what it is to be one of these institutions. There's something missing. This is what we would call um, a computer in the 1940s. It's, it's really the inner workings of an institution. It's a lot of people who are processing information. They're doing arithmetic. There are some records at the back. You can see it in the back of the picture, some drawers, um, where they will get up and go to in order to store or retrieve some information. And there will be instructions coming in periodically um, from the uh, mathematicians that actually want um, uh, those computations to be done. But this misses the point. In fact, the institution cannot simply be boiled down into these three things with a large building around them. Institutions deal with contention. They have to deal with contention because they are managing economically important data. The land registry office manages the information that determines whether I own some property or I do not. Banks have numbers in them. The numbers are not meaningless numbers. They determine the difference between rich and poor. They manage contention by virtue of having this fourth attribute. In addition to the three attributes of operation, they have authority. And it's with this authority that they can determine, that they can give semantics to these numbers, to this data. It's authority, which is the difference between the land registry being a, uh, a shopping list of property that I would like to own and the difference between owning a house and not. We can then build a better model of what it means to be an institution. An institution is this information processing, but it's backed up with authority. Some institutions, like for example aspects of the government, their, their authority is actually the military, right? the police force, the security forces. Others rely on the government in order to exert their authority by virtue of civil law, such as PayPal, the banks, and so forth. And this is pretty, a pretty good model of what it actually is to be an institution, and therefore a pretty good model of how society works, economically speaking, 
in its innards. We can model the way that society works as being a bunch of these institutions, each, of course, with their own Cartman, their own authority. And this is pretty much how society has worked for centuries now. Of course, in the meantime, there have been improvements to how we can determine whether a message is authenticated. Instead of using telephone calls or signatures, we increasingly use things like elliptic curve cryptography, a branch of mathematics that allows us to know whether someone purporting to be a particular identity is actually that identity without giving any of the information that could allow others to claim the same thing away. Instead of storing things in books, we store things instead on magnetic media or increasingly little microchips, solid state media. And rather than using abacuses or handwriting arithmetic, we use, of course, silicon. We end up with computers. Unfortunately, within, while within an institution, the computers can allow things to go much faster than they would otherwise have been going, between institutions and across trust boundaries, they are of no use. In fact, the world is much like a set of walled gardens. Within the garden, you are free to play. You can take into a, you, you accept the authority of the household that actually owns the garden, but it's very difficult to get between the gardens. In reality, this boils down to banks and various financial institutions make, uh, having a very difficult time consolidating transactions that go between them. But the more important thing is that as individuals and small business owners, it's very difficult for us to interact with each other if we don't yet know or trust each other. Instead, we have to go to these guardians of society, these intermediaries, these trusted authorities, the middlemen, in order to interact. And this comes down, we can see this every day. If I want to um, interact with my friends, I go to a website. The website is called facebook.com. I go and contact Mark Zuckerberg's company in order to pass on a message to tell my friends, hey, maybe we should go out. This is not quite the way the world was meant to be. I should not need to contact Mark Zuckerberg in order to actually say hello to my friends. There is a new technology, which was mentioned just before I came on stage, which changes things, which obsoletes this old order. This is my artistic rendition of this new technology. Atop the picture reads, A Pluribus Unum, from the many, one. And what the technology allows us to do is to come together, globally speaking, and form a consensus form a single opinion on what happened and when it happened and what should happen because of it. Effectively, to form a single institution. Now, the institution will operate correctly down to the rules of mathematics and economics that this system works on. In effect, everybody can ensure that the, the system as a whole is operating correctly from their own point of view. Everybody has the freedom to check. In that sense, blockchain has solved this issue of multi-party contention. And it's done so without having to have redress to a human organization. We don't anymore need to trust, strictly speaking, in order to interact economically with somebody that we do not know. And that's the first time that we've been able to do that in society. Which means, practically speaking, we've just commoditized this crazy asset, probably the, the most expensive asset to hold of all, trust. And I put it to you that in the future, trusting an opaque institution, a middleman, merchant, or intermediary with our interests will be as archaic a concept as reckoning on our advocacies today. Thank you.